Hello everybody, Dr. Rawls here. Over the past year, I've been writing a book on how herbs support the immune system and lower our risk of chronic illness. In that journey, I've learned a lot of stuff. There's just so much inf interesting information that uh, is out there that's been scientifically documented, but I don't have room for all of it in the book. So one of the more interesting stories is the story of the evolution of the human immune system. And it starts back about three and a half billion years ago with the first bacteria on Earth. That's when we first started seeing fossil records on Earth of bacteria. Back then, the Earth was a pretty inhospitable environment. It would have been like Mars. Um, our atmosphere would have been uh, rust colored instead of the blue sky that we have today because there wasn't any oxygen in the atmosphere. It was all carbon dioxide and other kinds of gases. And um, it took bacteria about a billion years to get a foothold on Earth because there wasn't any food. All food comes from something that was once living. And because there wasn't any life on Earth, there wasn't anything for bacteria to eat. They basically carved out an existence here and there where they could, like, like uh, volcanic vents under the ocean where there were some organic molecules that came together. And it was, it was really just a bare existence. So things didn't start changing until about a billion years into uh, life's history when certain kinds of bacteria figured out how to photosynthesize, to use energy from the sun to create food in the form of carbohydrate. So these bacteria kind of floated at the surface of the ocean and any other water surface on the planet and were able to generate food in the form of carbohydrates. And this, that, that, that's the one thing that changed everything. That's when life exploded because suddenly there was food. So it became a bacteria eat bacteria world. So bacteria that couldn't photosynthesize ate bacteria that could. And that's what started everything as far as our whole life cycle. Um, at that same time, those photosynthesizing bacteria started producing oxygen that started changing the atmosphere and, and life started flourishing at that point. But bigger is better when it comes to being a, an early predator. So certain bacteria became bigger, more advanced, could live longer so they could eat more and there became a lot of competition. Um, eventually in that game, bacteria started coalescing to form multicellular organisms, as did the photosynthesizing bacteria. So we started seeing that early representation of the difference between plant and animal. And everything was eating everything with those photosynthesizing bacteria and later plants as the foundation for it all. So as plant as animals started to evolve, then then and in a, in an early stage it was worms. So that animals started evolving in a way that it was they formed a tube so they could eat, they could consume things and pump out the waste at the other end. Uh, so that that cavity um, was was really essential to early animal life. So, interestingly, you know, everything has to eat, so bacteria immediately invaded these multicellular organisms and were invading their cells. Um, so we first started seeing what we call intracellular bacteria. Um, so there were bacteria inside of the early animals. And very interestingly, um, it was they, the scientists have actually discovered that there was an amoeba. Certain kinds of amoeba started patrolling the insides of animals to eat these bacteria that were invading the inside of the animals. And it was beneficial to the animal, that early worm, uh, the early multicellular organisms that we define as animals, um, it was beneficial, so eventually that became 
something that uh, the amoeba became part of the animal, and that's where our white blood cells, interestingly, came from. So animals develop this white blood cell immune system. Plants, on the other hand, don't have a cavity inside, so they did not have um, the same, re re the same uh, relationship with these amoeba. So plants, instead, they had to protect their cells from being eaten too by bacteria and everything else. So plants started evolving a biochemical defense system that's pretty analogous to our immune system, except it didn't use cells. So they were producing hundreds of and even thousands of different kinds of, of chemicals to defend their cells against uh, uh, early animals, bacteria, everything else. So you end up with two systems that are solving the same problem. One, a cellular system that evolved to be our immune system. So over the years, that system became more and more and more complex. You know, it was, it was constantly the immune system and the microbes in this, this challenging situation of having to one-up each other to, to move forward to get what they needed. And so the immune system became more and more and more complex. On the other side of things, as plants evolved, their biochemical immune system became more and more and more evolved and more and more complex. So getting to the root of the problem and how it uh, relates to the book is that here we've got two completely different systems but are solving the same problem. And because humans have eaten plants since the very beginning, or animals have eaten plants since the very beginning, these chemicals that plants produce are very, very similar, or, or, or very, very compatible with us. So when we eat those plants, it's like taking our cellular immune system and getting a boost from a whole different direction to solve this same problem which is really kind of cool when you think about it. But that in, is in, that in, a nut, is in a nutshell is why um, it's so important for us to eat plants, to do herbs, to gain that, that, that chemical protection system that the plants are using to support our immune system. So it protects our, us against microbes and all kinds of other stress factors that the plant is having to do so in essence, what we're doing is getting this huge boost to our immune system when we take herbs and embrace that, that uh, biochemical defense system that the plants are using. So I thought that was really one of the more interesting things that um, has come out of my studies for the book. But um, yeah, there, there's just so much to put in there that that story didn't quite fit in. So I wanted to share it with you. I, I hope that was uh, something that might help you make up your mind of uh, whether to take herbs or not. I think that in itself is a really cool argument. Take care.